The title of my message is The War of Ages. We sang The Rock of Ages. That's a beautiful song. And the title of my message is The War of Ages. Key verse is verse 11. Let's read the key verse together, uh, please. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the order of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In the last lesson, on chapter 11, verse 14 to 9, the seventh, seventh trumpet was sounded. And we could think of the meaning of it. It is, in short, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of Christ. Not happened yet, but written in perfect present tense has happened, has come, has become the kingdom of Christ, in sureness of Christ's kingdom. So far, until now, we could see what God did through seven seal judgments and six trumpet judgments and the blast of the seventh trumpet, which he will bring seven bold judgments. Bold judgments are written, chapters 15 and 16. Chapters 12, 13, and 14 are not written chronologically. This section takes us back to the creation. Go back, take us back from the creation. Even we say from eternity, the fall of Satan. And then this section brings us back, brings us, bring us forward to the end time. It is so that we may view the tribulation time not only from God's perspective, we did through chapter 6 to 11, but also from Satan's perspective. During the tribulation, God is going to proud the maximum amount of his fury. Also, Satan is going to pour out the maximum amount, his, amount of his fury as well. God is putting out his wrath on the ungodly, but Satan on the godly. Particularly, chapter 12, it's about the wages, the wage, the, the war of ages. From the time of Satan's fall to the end, end of tribulation. We have to know that there has been constant war, unceasing war going on through the whole universe. A war waged between Satan and his demons and God, his, God and his angels. It reaches, it reaches its climax at a time called the Great Tribulation. Satan will amass the greatest efforts against God and against Christ and, Christ and against the believers. He will make the most powerful effort to defeat God, to thwart his plan. Satan is furious to destroy God's people and God's history. In this study, we can see Satan's schemes and the way to overcome him in the war of ages. First, the woman and the dragon. Verse 1 says, A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, 
and with the moon on the her feet and the crown of 12 stars on her head. In the book of Revelation, the word sign here comes first, first time. One of the first of the seven. Sign means something is occurring that points to something else. Sign is a symbol of some reality. In Greek, Simeon, some pointing to some reality. <coughs> when it is sign, it's written, it's sign in Revelation. So it affirms us that Revelation is also to be interpreted, generally interpreted, literally. When you read, a sign or a symbol of some reality. When you see a woman <coughs> appearing in heaven, can you sign? The woman is not to illustrate literal woman. It's symbolic of some reality. Then what, what the woman does the woman represent? The woman represents Israel. Let's think about it. Israel is frequently depicted as the wife of God. One example, in Isaiah chapter 44, your maker is your husband. And other passages. Wife, unfaithful and adulterous wife in Hosea. In the end, God will Take her back to, bring her back to faithfulness. So she is uh, the whole, through the Old Testament as the wife of God. And Israel is symbolized as a woman. And here a woman clothed with a sun, with the moon on her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Here we are reminded of Joseph, Joseph's dream. Once he said to his father and brothers, I had another dream. This time, the sun, moon, and 11 stars are bowing down to me. So I think Joseph, was, Joseph himself was a star. And this dream came true when Joseph raised the power in Egypt. Joseph was the fruit of the lives of faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His new name is Israel. And specifically, Joseph was the first real product of Israel, <clears throat> along with other brothers. Joseph, in some ways, is the beginning of Israel. And the fact that the woman was clothed with the sun, clothed with sun, speaks of the glory, brilliance, and dignity of the redeemed Israel. Unique glory, unique brilliance, unique dignity of the redeemed Israel that is to be lifted up and exalted in the end. And Sun on the feet. Also, the sun, uh, the moon on the feet. Two could refer to exaltation. But also, it also could have the concept of covenant there. Because the moon is the central in the cycle of their worship. They were shipped in the cycle of yearly cycle through the new moons, series of new moons, festivals, and feasts, and sabbaths associated with moons, new moons. Once David and Jonathan had a conversation, they talked about 
n e w m o o n Festival. When David had to be escaped from Saul's attempt to kill him. So n e w m o o n moon on the feet, related to exaltation, also covenant relationship. And 12 stars. Share the crown of 12 stars. And he who crown is Stephanus, not diadem, Stephanus, a wreath, garland, a crown associated with, associated with the suffering and trouble. The 12 stars, they make up a garland, obviously for the 12 tribes of Israel. Here is Israel, glorified, exalted and glorified, in the hope of messianic, in the hope of messianic kingdom, in messianic hope, glorified and exalted. And that was initially seen in the dream of very dream of Joseph. Certainly, Israel was prefigured in the life of Joseph. Think about parallels. Joseph and Israel were sold to Gentiles, enslaved in captivity, buried among the nations, yet prominent, preserved, delivered, saved, given authority and the kingdom. Joseph is the wonderful picture of Israel. And then it says, She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. So Israel is not only a woman and a wife, but he a pregnant wife and woman, a pregnant woman who is about to give birth. Here Israel is seen as a mother. That's also a very familiar image, familiar image in Old Testament. For example, one verse, Isaiah 54. Woman. That's about this woman and Israel. And see, then another sign appeared in heaven. Enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Here is the woman's enemy, portrayed, dramatically portrayed in the sky. John saw another sign. He saw Red dragon. Satan is not dragon. Satan is a personal being. The image of red dragon is a sign, only a sign, pointing to some reality, symbolizing it. In this passage, clearly see that the dragon represents Satan. And the word dragon is written 13 times in Revelation. In this passage, nine times. Prior to this, in the New Testament, he is identified as serpent. Paul said about serpent, serpent's cunning. Dragon is far more terrifying. The term dragon fits in the category of the Hebrew word where we can get Leviathan, sea monster. The massive creature, far more awesome than serpent or snake. It's uh, some large, ferocious, and fearsome animal, vicious. Leviathan, written in Old Testament, dragon, yes, only New Testament, only in Revelation. That's connection. Very terrifying animal. And the dragon had seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns. Seven heads and ten, seven crowns. Here a crown is diadem crown. It indicates that Satan has been ruler of the kingdoms of the world. All the kingdoms of the world. Past, present, and future. And ten horns representing ten kings. When you read chapter 17, ten horns means ten kings. So ten horns 
show, shows that the final form of old rule, he'll be dominant. He'll dominate it all. He has been the ruler of the kingdom of the world, and he will be until the seventh trumpet being sounded, he started. At the time, the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of Christ. And at that time, it is the kingdom of Satan. And now, it says, He tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. This is read the fall of Satan, the fall of Lucifer. God said in Isaiah chapter 14, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, O Lucifer, son of the dawn. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. Here you get an insight of Satan's rebellion. And Lucifer is called morning star. And stars of God, the angels, stars report to angels. In Revelation we see that when Lucifer fell, one third of the angels fell. Since then, Satan has been fighting God for the control of the universe. He hates God. He hates, to, he hates God and he wants to destroy God's purposes, destroy God's people. He's fighting for his very life because he knows that when he loses the battle, he knows what his destiny is. And then the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. This well depicts the history of God in Israel. When God called Abraham, God's desire and plan was to bless all people's honors. In calling one person Abraham, God has such a big plan, desire to bless all people's owners. So God said to him, I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you. All people's owners will be blessed through you. When God, Abraham passed God's first test, God confirmed his promise. Through your offspring, all the nation's owners will be blessed because you have obeyed me. So this plan of God would be God's redemptive history, establishing nation Israel and sending the Messiah through ten nations, most specifically in the line of Judah, who was the fourth son of Jacob, Israel. That's God's amazing plan. Then, Satan's attack was to thwart this plan of God. When David was firmly established, when the kingdom of David in the line of Judah was firmly established, God confirmed this Abrahamic promise to David, saying, When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. It's very interesting how God continued the history of God in Israel. When there is no proper woman to be used by God for this plan of God, God prepared a gentle woman Ruth, to be the wife of Boaz, for the birth of Obed, who is the grandfather of David. God provides woman in such a way. Also, then from Obed, Isaac, uh, Jesse, and David, and David established the theoretic kingdom, and God promised. 
David was once in danger in his life. Then one of the generals rescued him. His men said to him, swearing, Never will you go out with us to a battle, so that the lamp of God will not be extinguished. Nation must be preserved for such God's great plan. When David's kingdom was divided into two, southern Judah and northern Israel, it was divided. Northern kingdom of Israel, they abandoned the Lord God and worshipped foreign gods. But southern Judah kept their faith in the Lord. Then Satan's attempt was to destroy southern Judah. There is a time in the nation Judah when Atalia, queen mother Atalia, who was from northern Israel, ruled the nation when her son was dead. She attempted, she proceeded to kill all the royal Destroy all whole royal family. In this situation, one godly couple took one grandson of Atalia and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered. He took him and hid him in the temple. The child remained with his nurse at the temple for six years. Then the husband of the godly couple succeeded in removing Atalia. And then he established a seven-year-old boy on the throne of David to rule. In this way, the work of God continued. Even after Babylonian captivity, David's line persisted until Christ was born. And he says, she gave birth to a son, a male child, who ruled all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was sent up to God and to his throne. We know when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Herod was ruling. Herod, Herod attempted to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and his personality who were two years old and under, suspecting that the baby Jesus born to be king of the Jews would be his political opponent. But God protected the life of baby Jesus by guarding his parents to escape to, to, escape to Egypt until Herod died. And the child grew and began his public ministry and completed God's given mission by dying on the cross in obedience to God's will to save his people from their sins. God raised him from the dead. He was ascended to heaven, to God and to his throne. And he'll be back. He's sitting on the throne of God, at the right hand of God. He'll be back to rule all nations. Here we can see very clearly that Satan cannot stop the work and history of God. God's work in history will continue with absolute protection until God fulfills his purpose at the returning of Christ Jesus. And here we see it's really a blessing to live in the streams of God's history being used, being used by God in this great work in this world. History of God is going on. What a blessing it is to participate in this work of God in his history. He never, never can stop his work and history. And it says, the woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,206 days. This will take place In the second part of a seven years tribulation, 1,206 days, seven and a half years. This is related to what you started in chapter 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod, was told, go and make 
measure the temple of God and the altar, and count the worshippers there. But exclude the outer court, do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles, they will trample on the holy city for 40 months. Same, 1,206 days, three and a half years. By God's absolute protection, this nation will remain to the end. In the time of tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Christ, where who will rule 1,000 years on the earth, written in chapter 20. Second, ongoing battle. Now, verse 7, and there is a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and dragon and his angels fought back. Carefully see, here there is conjunction and. This conjunction indicates, implies, signifies that there will be a war in the time of tribulation, in heaven. Although we don't know when exactly, so we don't know what triggered this uh, war. Probably the rapture of the church, but not 100% sure. Anyway, there is a war, would be, will be a war in heaven. And it shows that in the time of tribulation. Spiritual battle is really interesting. In Daniel chapter 10, a fascinating angel appeared to him. He says, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were hard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief priests, princes, came to help me because I was de detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns the time yet to come. Who is this who resisted the angels coming to help Daniel? Who is this king of Persia, prince of Persian kingdom? This is demon associated with the human system of Persian empire. We, should, we are to know that human governmental systems, while government as entity ordained by God to control people, that's the very place for Satan to in, infiltrate, infiltrate with demons. Then he can rule very effectively. And anyway, here such a thing happened when angel was coming to help God's servant. A demon blocked. Such a thing happens. And here, uh, Michael was there. And then here, Michael and his angels were fighting with the dragon and his angels. There was a result of this battle. He was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. And the great dragon was held down that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hauled to the earth, and his angels with him. Here, dragon was hauled down, again written, hauled to the earth. You know, even after the fall of Satan, Satan has access to God and have time with God in conversation. We will see the several examples in Job. On one another day, the angel came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered, The Lord 
on set the load from roaming through the dealers and roaming back and forth in it. Then the Lord said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. His blandness and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. He still remain, maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him, throwing him without any reason. There is conversation between God and Satan. Even after the fall. Another example. Zechariah 3. Then he showed me an angel showed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, standing, Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebukes you, Satan. And in Second King, First Kings, there was a prophet, Micah. He always told the truth to King Ahab. And Ahab does not, did not like it. He wanted to listen to first prophets. Then Micah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the hosts of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. Then the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth, Gilead, and going to his death there? One source says this, another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By one means, the Lord asked, I'll go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets, he said. So a demon belongs to Satan. See? Satan could have access to God and spend much time. Later on, accuse God's people day and night. He could spend time day and night. For what? He had his own plan. Told God's plan to accomplish his own plan. Excess. But now, here, when he lost the battle, he hold down, hold to the earth. No more access to God. That would happen. Now Satan is called the ruler of the kingdom of the air, but no more. Time of tribulation. And it says, who leads the whole world astray? In other translation, he deceives the whole world. He leads the whole world astray by deception. He was a deceiver. He was a deceiver from the beginning. Liar. God said to Eve, you surely die. Satan told the right, you will actually die. And Jesus said of the devil, Satan, in Roman, John chapter 8, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks this native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. There is an unceasing battle. There has been unceasing battle in the world between God's truth and Satan's lie. You know, even after just resurrection, right after resurrection, lies spread that his disciples came and stole the body. One characteristic of Satan and his people, those belong to him, is lying. They lie intentionally. And they lie, lie intentionally against God's truth and against fact. They lie cryptically, cryptically, and lying becomes habit. Lying begets lying. We should watch out for lying people. We should watch out worldwide deception. He is now deceiving through philosophies, psychologists, psychologists, and human systems. But his destiny is clear. Going astray. The whole world is astray. Going astray. He is a deceiver and he is an accuser here. See? After that, then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, 
now have come the salvation power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. And the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Yes, the salvation and power, kingdom of our God and of the authority of his Christ has come through his death and resurrection. But when Satan was hurled down to the earth, it was assured. And here, then, why? For the accuser of brothers who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. Heaven cleared up, rejoicing. But here, let's think about it. Satan accuses us, God's people. There are also those who are experts in accusing people. Now with the whole story, or whole, not with the full story, the whole truth, but partial story, partial truth, half truth. It's not easy to overcome Satan's accusation and others' accusation. But here, the voice, John heard the voice in heaven. The voice said, the accuser of our brothers. This voice is not the voice of angels, it's the voice of Redeemed people, glorified saints. Satan does not accuse angels, but believers. Our brethren is never used to refer to angels, but those who are human, who are believers. It's surprising that our Redeemer, the Savior Jesus, is our brother. In Hebrews says, his, Jesus is now ashamed to be called us brothers. And he is also our lawyer. First John says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, righteous one. It's really amazing that we have Jesus as a brother, brother lawyer, and God as our father. Have you ever seen angel call God, calling God father? No. The redeemed and the redeemer, Jesus, God the father, are one family. Amazing. And then, now it says, Yes, John asked a first time more. He's the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the brothers. We can speak in our defense as a lawyer, a brother. Now, then, yes, our God, our brothers, written, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Here you see, how can he overcome the devil? Those are born again. Do not sin intentionally. Verse says, no one, who is, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. But when they sin unwittingly, and the sins are obvious, they repent before God, depending on the blood of the Lamb. And blood of the Lamb cleanses our consciences. Blood of the Lamb is written in Revelation several times. In chapter One verse five, who loves us and has freed us by freed us from our sins yeah, by his blood. He freed us from our sins by his blood. And in chapter five, look, with your blood you purchased man for God. He paid full price and purchased us. And then he made our robes white, made 
works are made in the blood of the Lamb. So there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Always. In God wants to live in this grace. Blood of the Lamb. But when our sins are just repent, again, cleansed again, we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Overcome Him. His occasion by the blood of the Lamb. Our conscience are cleared. And by the word of the testimony, this very interesting expression, it does not say the word of God or by their testimony. In chapter 6, they were slain because the word of God and testimony is maintained. But here, by the word of their testimony, this will mean by the word that we digested and the word became our testimony. That was his power to overcome the devil. That's why you write testimony that the word of God became the word of our testimony. That was his power to defeat the devil. So there is him song. One little word shall fail him. One little word shall fail him. That word you can hold on to at critical time. You can defeat the devil. And they did not live off their lives so much as to shrink from death. When you are afraid of death, you can overcome the devil. You can only kill our body, man, our soul. But God can keep us by fearing God. With faith in Jesus' resurrection, we can overcome death. And with no fear, and we can win over the devil. And he continues, says, Therefore is always your heavens, you, you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He's filled with fury, because he knows that his time is near. Now, the devil is held down. He becomes fierce battle. The earth, battle is expected. And it's written continually. When dragon saw or he has been held to the earth, he pushed the woman. Who had been given, who had given birth to the male child. And the woman was given to the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for in the desert, where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time, out of serpent reach, that's three and a half years. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman, sweep her away with a torrent. But the, the earth helped the woman by opening his mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman, went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, offspring those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Great battle is expected, but still those turned to Christ can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. Amen. Let's pray.